If you so much as haunt the launch site with your presence and access human shields for refugees who have already been sentenced to death, we will kill you. This was North Korea's chilling message to South Korea in response to the activist launching of propaganda balloons. We on site proposition today believe that North Korea is uniquely hyper-reactive, which is why we believe that the South Korean government has an obligation to first and foremost take measures to ensure the safety of all citizens. And banning propaganda, propaganda balloons is the first step to security. Therefore, we proudly propose the motion that, <laughs> resolved, South Korean government should ban the sending of propaganda balloons to North Korea. Before we move on to our constructive case, we would like to define propaganda balloons as balloons that carry material from South to North Korea that are intended to encourage North Korean citizens to defect or revolt. Now let's go on to our constructive case. Contention 1, stability on the Korean Peninsula, sub point A, free speech limitation. In the real world, however democratic a nation may be, freedom of speech is never absolute. For example, one cannot shout, fi shout fire in the theater or bomb on a plane. As such, Article 37.2 of the Korean Constitution states that all constitutional rights can be limited under circumstances that endangers public security. Furthermore, the National Security Act limits people's right to endorse North Korea and communism as it undermines national security. Article 19.3b of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights ICCPR, states that free speech can be limited for protection of national security or public order. Similarly, on January 6th, according to the Korean Herald, the Ulcheonbu District Court of Korea stated that propaganda balloons could be limited for reasons of protecting national security. Sub point B, national security threat. On October 16, 2014, according to Korea Times, over 50 rounds of bullets were exchanged between North Koreans and the South Korean military as North Korea fired into the regions from where these balloons were sent from. Furthermore, on January 14th, according to Channel A, Kim Jong-un ordered his troops stationed near the DMZ to start practicing for attacks into regions of Paju and Yeonchon because of these propaganda leaflets. We cannot assume forever that North Korean threats will stay empty. Because there is a reasonable probability of attack, we should be responsible and take measures to prevent deaths. Contention 2, counterproductive, sub point A, hinders peace negotiations. On January 1st, according to Euronews, Kim Jong-un expressed will to resume high-level talks that had been suspended. However, because of the launching of another round of propaganda balloons, he quickly retracted this statement. On January 9th, according to Joseon Ilbo, North Koreans issued an ultimatum that we either choose to continue negotiations or bring relations to the brink of rupture with the continuation of propaganda balloons. We will not allow the actions of a few radicals to turn upside down the opportunities to discuss fundamental issues such as denuclearization and disarmament, discussions that cannot happen between citizens. Propaganda balloons close the platforms on which to discuss these issues. Sub point B, harmful to North Koreans. According to John Pfeffer, co-director of the Institute for Policy Studies, the balloons might land on the roof of a farmer's dwelling, leading the North Korean authorities to drag in the unwitting fellow in the suspicion that he stowed it there on purpose. Pfeffer says that propaganda balloons led to a crackdown on North Koreans in 2013 on its citizens. Although these activists are trying to be humanitarian, they are causing counterproductive and counterintuitive results. In addition, as the Conti may say, these propaganda balloons could incentivize certain defectors to come across. However, because of the three-generation punishment policy, for every one director, one defector that crosses the border, we are putting three generations at risk, possibly 10 or even 20 people. A ratio of one save for 20 lives in labor camps, labor camps is in no way humanitarian, and therefore diplomacy is the best way to go. Ultimately, the actions of these activists, actions that provoke North Korea, are reversible. The deaths that the Khan team today may instigate are not. Jay Lefkowitz, envoy for North Korea under Bush's administration, has said that such a provocative stance toward North Korea is tantamount to an invitation for Pyongyang to strike South Korea. Let us be realistic and vote proposition. Thank you. Imagine you were forced to leave your brothers, sisters, and other beloveds behind in the country you ran away from in terror, North Korea. And now you're here, safe with a new life. You're happier and healthier, but you don't feel complete because you don't have them by your side. You want to inform your loved ones of what's really going on, what sort of propaganda they're living under, what terrible conditions they're living under, and how unfairly they're being treated, but there's no way to reach them. And in order to finally bring the peninsula together, you choose to send propaganda balloons. Today, we are here to proudly debate that, yes, this 
that no, the South Korean government should not ban the sending of propaganda balloons to North Korea for three main contentions. Firstly, the right to freedom of expression. The right to freedom of expression is not thoroughly protected if the sending of propaganda balloons is prohibited. According to the Constitution of the Republic of South Korea, the right to freedom of expression, a fundamental right of all people of South Korea and in all democratic nations, is enforced as the 21st article of the second chapter of the Constitution. It states that all citizens are guaranteed the freedom of speech the pub publication and assembly and has the freedom of association. Clearly, sending propaganda balloons is a form of freedom of speech and or publication, and gathering social activists is a form of the freedom to assemble. Whether the social activists that send propaganda balloons are plain Korean citizens or North Korean defectors, who are considered South Korean citizens by law, according to the Asset Institute for Policy Studies, the Constitution, the legal foundation of South Korea itself, states that all citizens, regardless of shape and size and origin, must be guaranteed their freedom of expression. Therefore, if the South Korean government went, were to officially prohibit the sending of propaganda balloons, they would be defying their own constitution and depriving their own citizens of their fundamental rights. Secondly, the threat of war. The empty threats from the North Koreans are unrealistic. Whatever threat the North Korean government implies toward the North Korean citizens for receiving the flyers within the propaganda balloons or to the South Koreans for sending them, all are either unrealistic or impossible to enforce for all people at all times, or have minimal effect on the security of a nation as a whole. It is true that North Korean government took militaristic action to respond to Korea's propaganda balloons, but it is unlikely that their actions will ascend to be great enough to cause any real casualties, let alone war. According to NK News from August 4, August October 15th, the weapons in the North Korean army are obsolete. Most soldiers in North Korea carry automatic rifles which weigh about 7.9 pounds. They can load up to 30 rounds. I heard they were the same old guns that they used in World War I. New weapons are hardly found in the North Korean army, and that's it. Even those guns are, even those guns are very old, which leads to fr frequent accidental discharges among my own colleagues. And aside from a possibility that North Korea may use nuclear weapons, there is little chance, if any, that North Korea wins a war in light of its poor, we poor weaponry and unmotivated soldiers. The shots they fired across the border on October 15th after propaganda balloons had no casualties because they were not aiming at people, they aimed at the balloons. It was a mere threat to try to scare off the South Koreans. Due to this clear advantage that the South Korean army has, along with the US military, the most powerful military in the world on their side, North Korea wouldn't dare wage war, making the threat of war unrealistic. And also the third death penalties to North Korea that receive the messages that do propaganda balloons are balloons send are unlikely to be carried out in actuality to all that all that all that do receive these messages, and even if they were to be harmed by these messages, no pain, no gain. This is all for the greater good of uniting the Korean Peninsula. Finally, a the sending of propaganda balloons is effective propaganda and helps unification. Propaganda balloons have been proven as effective propaganda and can be seen as a daring, yet rewarding and revolutionary movement in history, step towards the unification of the Korean Peninsula. Propaganda balloons have been proven as effective in revealing, in revealing the antics of the North Korean government, thus weakening the government, as well as causing more North Koreans to cross the border to South Korea. According to interviews of activists that were done in CNN article published on May 31st, 2010, many activists who were originally North Korean defectors said, it worked for me, said Kim. I thought maybe this is propaganda from the South, he said. The important part, he said, is that he began to question the unquestionable military in the North and the regime. And therefore, we believe that um, we ask you to vote for opposition. Second Inter-Korea High Senior Level Military Agreement Article 3.1 explicitly states that both countries have promised to ban such propaganda leaflets from being sent over on one, one another's border. Do you think that this violation of a senior level military agreement is an act of extreme provocation, severing all negotiations, or, or and even in instigating war? We, we agree that yes, it is a violation of whatever pact that was, but we uh, believe that in the, in the course of history, in order to bring change, there must be some rule breaking. There must be bending the laws. The world has to be a lot more flexible than this. In order to bring peaceful, peaceful unification in the near future, in order to benefit the entirety of the Korean Peninsula, there must be some changes and there must be movement quick. Right now, without any of these um, negotiations enough to, and propaganda activities to bring defectors towards South Korea, there is uh, it is unlikely that North Korea and South Korea will be able to merge as one country in safety. And we believe that for the benefit of the North Koreans as well as the South Koreans, this is completely justified action. We also want to ask, are you for or against unification? 
are for unification, but we are not for radical and fast reunification that leads to more casualties within North Korea. And we cannot guarantee uh, security and liberty for these people if we do not have diplomatic changes. Because ultimately what we will be seeing is that these defectors, one defector comes over and 10 or 20 lives are lost in these certain regions. So we think that that is more harmful to the North Koreans as well as the South Koreans. We think that we want reunification, but diplomacy is the way to go, not propaganda balloons. May I ask a follow up? Yes. Are you aware that there haven't been any successful diplomatic talks since 2007? And from 2007 until now, um, Kim Jong has refused to have proper diplomatic talks face to face with Park Geun that discusses unification? We would wholly deny the fact that diplomacy hasn't worked. Because simply looking from the context of the Korean Peninsula right now, it has been very different from the 1980s and the 2010s. The relationship and the tensions have changed during this era, from 1990, mainly from 1998 to this certain time when the Sunshine Policy was implemented. Right? We see that diplomacy in this case has brought work. However, we would like to question your propaganda balloons. Propaganda balloons were active since 1970s. And onward, there have been worse relations just because of these propaganda balloons. How do you propose that we actually have diplomacy and save all these people from propaganda balloons. Could you shorten your question? How do we, how do we what? How do we so basically, propaganda balloons have been there since 1970s. And, and according to your logic, if they were so effective, then we would already have reunification. But it has only worsened the relationship between North Korea and South Korea and it hasn't caused any simple um, relationship um, tensions to get alleviated. That's a very extreme way to view the situation. You can't just say that, oh, if propaganda balloons were so effective, why didn't we reunify in the past, say, 20 years? 1980s and 2010s, as you said, has improved, and you have no proof saying that propaganda balloons didn't help the situation. Who knows? Maybe it did. According to some interviews from defectors, it worked for them. There are illegal radios, there are black markets, and there are propaganda balloons. There is not only one medium to enforce reunification amongst the people, and therefore you, can't, you have no proof saying that propaganda balloons aren't helpful. Uh, judges ready? Yes. Opponents ready? Alright, then I'll begin. For my speech, I'm going to go over the three fundamental arguments that they gave us from the Khan side. And first of all, is the idea of the freedom of expression. Do we think that freedom of expression is an important right? Absolutely. But do we think that is an absolute right? Absolutely not, ladies and gentlemen. And they gave us the reference of the Korean Constitution. They told us that uh, the Korean Constitution gives everyone the right to free speech. But in the Korean Constitution, ladies and gentlemen, in Article 37 2, the freedoms and rights of citizens may be restricted by the Act only when necessary for national security, the maintenance of law and order for public welfare. So what we tell you is that even under the Korean Constitution, with, which they refer to, it says that the government does have the right to limit free speech when there is tangible uh, security harms. And we already proved to you the security harms. First of all, we told you that there is a crossfire. They responded by saying that there was no collateral damage, there was no ca casualties, that these threats are merely empty. But what proof does the Kansai have today that uh, shows that these, uh, stay, these threats will stay empty forever? And when we see that there is no uh, proof from the Kansai, we don't think that we can play on this uh, uncertainty. And also we give you the ICCPR, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the National Security Act of South Korea that all allow the government to limit rights in terms in, uh, in cases where public security is harmed. Now let's go on to their second argument, which is about the empty threat. So we told you that there's no proof that these threats are going to stay empty. For example, we proved causality that on January 1st that Kim Jong-un actually stated that we want to from talks. However, on January 9th, because of the sending of another round of propaganda balloons, we told you that Kim Jong Un actually retracted his statement and said we don't want talks. So we're telling you that these propaganda balloons have a causal effect on actually not allowing diplomacy. We tell you that diplomacy and talks of this denuclearization, talks of disarmament, are not 
uh, uh, are not possible on a uh, resident to resident basis. Just because we send propaganda uh, uh, balloons that reach citizens, it doesn't mean we can solve those issues. It needs to be a nation nation basis. And if we allow the sending of propaganda balloons to continue, this diplomacy, this opportunity for talks, is going to continue to close up. And also, they told you that the North Korean army is obsolete. However, ladies and gentlemen, uh, North Korea's uh, military strength still ranks one of the strongest in the world, and it's more weaponry than the, uh, uh, South Korea. And also, what we want to say is that we uh, we don't think that North Korea has to cause full-out war in order to engage, in order to harm South Korea. For example, the Yongpyong and Cheonan attacks, there wasn't full-blown war, however, still there were South Korean casualties. So even though North Korea doesn't have an incentive to cause full-out war, we believe that North Korea can still cause significant casualties on the Korean side, and that is why we believe that we have to prevent certain actions. We need to be proactive instead of reacting to search, uh, certain actions. Now let's go to the third argument, which is about the effectiveness of, uh, they gave us little proof, they told us, oh, the factors say that this worked. What about the three generations that were harmed, that were sent to prisoner camp because of these defectors, ladies and gentlemen? We don't think this is humanitarian or just in any way. And according to uh, Professor Kenk of Kukmin University, he said that leaflets have a minimal effect because they are usually picked up in the north by hardly any people. They are also mistrusted because they came from the source of hostile propaganda. So we clearly see that these leaflet propaganda balloons, they have minimal effects, and therefore we don't think that uh, they should be justified in sending these effects, especially when it we're sacrificing a minimal effect for the entire Korean people's national security. We think that in the case in which national security is tangibly harmed, as we continuously prove to you, and when the Kansai cannot predict for us whether North Korea is going to attack, or whether it's not going to attack, we don't think that we can take this chance. We think that we have to be proactive. We don't think that we should react after many people have died. And for these reasons, because we think national security is an important issue in this debate, we think that you should vote for the pro side. Thank you. The opposition team would like to rebut their three arguments. First of all, their first argument of stability of Korean Peninsula, their sub point of freedom of speech. They mentioned about Article 37 from Korea, um, South Korean Constitution, and we they have stated that this can freedom of speech can be limited in case of threatening national security. However, the opposition team clearly clearly has a rebuttal to that because the national security right now in the situation is not harmed. According to the DW argument uh, article on October 15, 2014, they've stated that there was no practical harm done by the social activists. There was no physical injuries done by the social activists, meaning that the national security of South Korea is not yet harmed. And moving on, the they have mentioned about the um, how we can drop the freedom of speech because they they take the more importance. However, according to Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is a customary international law, it states that we cannot put an importance over something for the human rights because they're equally important. Thus, improving thus proving that their first argument is wrong. And moving on to their shots fired from North Korea, they've stated that shots was fired from North Korea, thus threatening the security of South Korea. However, shots were also fired from South Korea, meaning the South Korea had a capability of defending themselves and not threatening national security because they were able to protect themselves. And thus, thus their some point B of shots fired from North Korea stands wrong. And moving on to their second argument of counterproductive, their sub point A was Kim Jong Il's. Uh, providing high-level talks from Joseon Ilbo. However, South Korean government said that they cannot limit freedom of speech because they, the citizens have the right to the freedom of speech and they can say whatever they want to because this is a human right that South Korean government is different from the North Korean government. And second point of harmful to North Koreans, they have given us three conditions. Might land an unwanted destination, and second, crackdown on North Koreans, and third, three-generation policy. Their first statement of might land an unwanted destination, that is wrong, because freedom fighters from North Korea have delivered 52 million leaflets, thus, improving that, thus proving that they have enough leaflets to provide for everyone, and, and one, according to uh, CNN on May 31, 31st, 2010, uh, Kwang Young Hee said, my brothers are still living there. He was a defector and he said, I'll be happy if they can come home after reading these messages. North Koreans know nothing about Kim Jong-il except for his power as a general and chef of the company, uh, of the country. We want to know, we want them to know the truth. And second of, second of all, um, a point perspective from Kim, he said the listening to the stories, I thought maybe this is propaganda from the South, he said. The important part is that he began to question the regime of North Korea. Just the question led to him fleeing the North. 
and I don't want to see that for myself. Meaning that the North Koreans want this propaganda balloons because this ensures that they know about what is happening in North Korea. And moving on to their second point of crackdown on North Koreans. However, this is not true. They mentioned about in their third argument of provoking North Korea. However, if this is provoking North Korea, this means the North Korean government is agreeing that this is that this propaganda balloons are effective enough to pro provoke their North Korea and give military talks with South Korean government. And as my partner mentioned about how we have to um, go through pain in order to get some gain, we need to know, realize that because the North Korean government giving empty talks mean that they have, they, the propaganda balloons have been effective enough to provoke the North Korean government and they are, they, they, the propaganda balloons are useful enough to, um, useful enough to influence the citizens of North Korea and also provoke the North Korean government, thus proving that our, our, um, our opposition team um, is right. Thank you. So do you think that as a result of these propaganda balloons, on a resident-to-resident -resident, uh, basis, that talks such as denuclearization and disarmament talks can continue? We're not saying that military talks can continue. However, we are saying that because there should be a pain, uh, there should be a process of where citizens have to go through some pain in order to reach, uh, reach the goal that we want to have. Because and the the things that though you're talking about military talks actually contra const contradict their their argument of provoking North Korea. Because as I mentioned in my uh, rebuttal speech, the provoking North Korea actually means that they North Korea got the, um got the offended by the propaganda balloons, meaning the propaganda balloons were effective enough to let the citizens of North Korea to know what is going on in North Korea. Okay, so what you say, you said that these propaganda balloons are effective because they're true, so we might think, we agree that they might be true in some senses, but let's define what effective means. If you're wanting peace, if you're wanting humanitarian for North Koreans, is your intended effect to uh, cause a 2013 crackdown on North Korean citizens? Is your intended effect to say, uh, send hundreds of people to uh, prisoner camps? Is that the pain that you want in order for your gain? The fact that you're talking about concentration camps actually um, strikes me ironic because there are there the fact that you're talking about few people, the minority of people who are sent to concentration camps doesn't actually mean that the majority of North Koreans don't see the don't see uh, don't actually get to see the propaganda balloons. And what I believe, um, according to data uh, received from CNN, they say that 80 to 90 percent actually get to uh, get the opportunities to see the propaganda balloons, and they realize the ruthless reality that a uh, North Korean really, uh, regime is. Um, pressuring on the North Korean citizens and yeah. Okay, so first of all, let's assume that the, all these people are. Oh, sorry. Let's assume that all these people can actually see these propaganda balloons. Well, we seem to intend to harm because first of all, let's see that they look at these balloons and they do revolt. In that case, the opposition case here cannot ensure that there's going to be a peaceful transition. They can't ensure that there's not going to be a violent crackdown on the citizens. And secondly, what we say is that if these people see the balloons, and in the case that they don't revolt, they'll only be able to imagine a life that they can live, that other people live, but they themselves cannot live. And therefore, we believe that there's a psychological harm associated with that as well. However, you're 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 keep on you're keep on stressing that the North Koreans do not actually have the opportunities to go to South Korea and that this is a false dream of North Korea. So, however, this is untrue because of the fact that we received data from the actual North Korean defectors living in South Korea. They have said this propaganda balloons or propaganda actions made by the social activists in South Korea are effective enough because they got they got the idea of fleeing North Korea and coming to South Korea. Okay, so you gave us um, evidence of individual accounts in which these people say that these propaganda balloons are effective, but this is a direct... never gave us any proof on whether it's effective on the larger scale, whether it's effective on a national scale. We we'll tell you that because of these th three generation punishment policy, that there are larger harms. When uh, one person comes across, three generations of family are, are actually harmed. So when we view it on a quantitative basis, we think that's very ineffective. We do not agree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, in the summary speech, I'm going to mainly look through two key issues. First, does this endanger national security? And second, are propaganda balloons, in fact, even effective? But first, national security. We say yes, this causes harms in national security. Why? We told you that there were 50 rounds of bullets fired. They told us that there are no casualties. 
But what could happen next time? You have no guarantee that just because there are no casualties, that there's no national security harm. But secondly, we have counter evidence that on January 14th, North Korea practiced drills firing into Pachu and Yeonchuan attacks, as stated in my speech. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't conduct military drills against another country, right in front of another country, when you're just having empty threats. Ladies and gentlemen, and furthermore, we've continually emphasized the fact that you never gamble with national security as they do with our lives. But secondly, they told us that these Weapons are obsolete. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter how weapons are obsolete, they are still weapons. They can cause casualties as seen in the Yongpyeong attacks, ladies and gentlemen. They've second said that there was no there was retaliation, so it's okay. However, ladies and gentlemen, we see that retaliation is retaliation. It is not being proactive. It is not preventing these lives. It is not preventing Yongpyeong attacks from happening again. We retaliated during the Yongpyeong attacks, but it was still a national security threat. Going on to the issue of whether propaganda balloons are in fact even effective at all. We would say that all they have provided us was primary evidence. Ladies and gentlemen, if I say that Obamacare worked for me, does not necessarily mean that Obamacare or all these legislation is effective in fact. Ladies and gentlemen, we've questioned the fundamental basis of their evidence. But secondly, what we would say is that they talked about how these people are going to look at these and be ruthless. But we provided you clear evidence that these people really do not have an opportunity to do this. And furthermore, we told you that it's even more unhumanitarian. humanitarian. And finally, their final base of logic in here was that North Korea put it on the negotiating table because it was important. However, they proved no causality because what we see is that they may be just annoyed with these aviation laws. They may be annoyed that South Korea is continually sending these. They prove no causality why propaganda balloons are effective. Therefore, the North Korean government is putting it on the negotiation table. And for those reasons, we believe that their fundamental basis and their evidence is all questioned. Thank you. Honorable judge and opponents, today's debate was about national security breach or not. And us, as the opposition side, want to say that this is not a national security breach. Our, our proposition continues to attack us by saying, what gives you the proof? What leads you to assume that th these threats this time aren't going to be empty? We want to ask, what proof do you have to say that they, will, that they won't be empty? We have no, if, there, if it's a hypothetical situation either way, it might be empty and it might not be empty, but a responsible government should not trade protecting the rights of their citizens for something that they're not sure of. There is no national security breach. North Korea has threatened South Korea plenty of times in the past. After ba Park Kinei made a speech at UN criticizing and offending the North Koreans, they said, we will turn the sea of South Korea into a sea of fire. Did they do that? No. Therefore, there is no proof that this threat won't be empty. And also, we have a doubt that they even have the possibility and the capability to do so. Therefore, we believe this is not a national security breach. And we believe that threat from North Korea exists at all times. North Korea is pissed off, technically speaking, <laughs> at South Korea for more than just propaganda balloons. There are lots of things that North Korea doesn't like about South Korea. Therefore, eliminating just propaganda balloons isn't solving the fundamental problem. Should the government, a responsible government, Sa um, sacrifice keeping their citizens' rights, the freedom of speech, for something that they're not sure of. If their logic is correct, then we should be ban banning planes, banana peels, and stairs, because people can technically die from those two. There is no evidence to say that they will die. There is no evidence to say that this is a national security breach, and therefore, the idea that freedom of speech should be limited in the case of national security breach is not uh, fitting in this situation. Freedom of speech comes first in this situation. Also, for contention too, they're ignoring the fact that there is there is a help in um, reunification. They said it, in, it got better from 98 to 2010. Yay, yes, it may not be just because of propaganda balloons, but there was help because people said that, yes, we defected because of propaganda balloons. There are lots of mediums, black market, illegal radio, propaganda balloons, but together they form a synergy effect and that is what has led to an, improve, an improvement from 98 to 2010. And therefore, we believe that all of their points are invalid and we carry the debate. Thank you. You seem to be claiming that freedom of speech is absolute, so would you feel safe or would you be okay with the fact that someone can say fire in a theater? Fire in a theater in this case is different. Fire in a theater is spreading false information. This is threatening people's lives because they don't know, and this could lead to people trampling when they're running out of the exit because there is no fire. But in this case, we don't know if there's a national security breach at all. There's always been threats from North Korea constantly for various different reasons. Therefore, we cannot say that, oh, if we eliminate propaganda balloons, there will be no threat from North Korea. If South Koreans feel that their life is threatened at all times, then eliminating propaganda balloons isn't solving the problem. Therefore, there is no national security breach.
Can you say that there's no national security breach when there's active attack uh, planning from uh, the perspectives of North Korea in um, places such as um, places such as um, Paju and Yeonchun, when there are actual um, exercises happening, when there have been actual crossfires, and when you yourself cannot predict what North Korea is going to do, and when North Korea is hyper-reactive, can you predict, can you ensure that there is going to be no national security harm? If you keep saying that North Korea is hyper-reactive, why haven't they attacked South Korea already from 1980s to 2010s? Like you said, the tension in the 1980s was extremely high, and if they're so hyper-reactive, why don't they just go for it? Because they know it's not going to work. They're not that dumb. So what we would say is the reason that they do not attack right now at this point is because they want diplomacy. And by sending propaganda balloons, you're basically destroying this tie, severing this tie, a tie for the whole, um, for the whole uh, future of South Korea. I would like to rebut back to your um, second speaker. You mentioned about the um, attacks from North Korea. However, I mentioned in my rebuttal speech continues that the attack from North Korea didn't harm, didn't put any practical harm on South Koreans. And also, South Koreans also uh, did rifle shot fires back to North Korea to show their capability. And meaning that North Korea was threatened by this, and meaning that they did not, they realized the uh, military uh, capabilities of South Korea. The shooters across the board from the propaganda balloons were on October 14, 2014, and in the year of 2015, at the beginning of the year, Kim Jong-un said 2015 is reunification year, and said there is no reason to evade the most highest summit. Therefore, propaganda balloons isn't eliminating the cause of um, um, cause of diplomacy, so it's not severing ties. Two responses. First of all, of course, we told you that Kim Jong-un did say that there's going to open up for high-level talks in January 1st. January 9th, according to your news, we told you that they, they retracted they, that statement because of the propaganda balloons. And also on January 14th, we gave you evidence that North Korea is actively preparing for attacks against South Korea. So we believe that their evidence is, is dated and saying that North Korea wants diplomacy. And to answer your previous question on why we don't, why North Korea hasn't attacked so far, well, of course, we don't believe that North Korea has the incentive to call call it a cause full-out war. But we do believe that North Korea has the incentive to cause small skirmishes that could kill South Korean citizens. And what we value every single Korean citizen, we don't think that we should be reactive, we think we should be proactive. When North Korea has already caused harm to South Korea because of these small uh, skirmishes, the China attack, the Yeopongo attack, we don't think that we should take any gambling chances. So your idea is that appeasement to the bully is always the correct answer? Well, what about World War II? In order to avoid... Um, conflicts with Germany, they appeased with Germany and gave them all the territory they wanted, and eventually what did Germany do? They attacked Poland. We wouldn't say that this is an appeasement foreign policy in the first place, because just because you give negotiations, just because you give in to some useless propaganda balloons, does not necessarily mean that you're caving into the other country. You have to look at foreign policy in the basis of national interest. You have to weigh the cost and the cost and the benefits, and we should come up with a judgment on that. Just because we say that the costs are too big for this, and that we're calling it off, does not necessarily mean that we're going to appease them every single time, does not necessarily mean that we're caving into their threats. Propaganda balloons, if they're so small and petty. If propaganda balloons are so small and petty and they don't lead to a constant change of a chain of appeasement, then why then why are you saying that we should cut it off in the first place? Then why is it even a threat? Because we're saying that because of these because of these That's time. Judges ready? Yeah. Everyone's ready? I'm gonna assume that <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so judges, I don't know if you ever heard the statement. It's better to be safe than it is to be sorry. So if I don't know whether there is homework due tomorrow or not, then I do my homework to make sure that I don't get repercussions from my teacher. We think that this is a rather serious topic. We don't think that we should be gambling with South Korean, uh, um, the, uh, South Korean security. So one of the things that we actually pointed out in this debate today is that they proved, they gave you evidence from October 2014 that it, there's no public security threat. But we gave you evidence from a few days ago, two, three days ago in fact, saying that there is a new security threat. So the fact that they haven't responded to these new security threats poses a problem that they don't understand the dynamic relationship between North and South Korea. We think that's a very important issue in today's debate. Now let's do the cost-benefit analysis, or maybe should I say cost-cost benefit that we see today. So the benefits, it satisfies a few defectors, and we see that that's the only benefit. Now let's look at the massive harm, the vast array, array of harms. So first, we told you about the national security th uh, threat, and we both, we all agreed here that there's no way to uh, uh, um, uh, 
there's no way to predict what North Korea is going to do. They're hyper-reactive. And in a case in which they might attack, like uh, the Yeonchon attack and the Chonanam attacks, in the case that they might attack, we need to make sure that that doesn't happen. We have to take a proactive measure. We're not going to have lives uh, in order, uh, we're not going to be able to protect freedom of speech if there are no lives to protect, ladies and gentlemen. And also, let's look at the second factor, which is North Koreans. Um, a larger scope, they told us individual accounts of people who have actually been helped by propaganda balloons. But what we see is that they don't see the larger scope. That according to John Pfeffer of the Institute on Policy Studies, that these propaganda balloons that are unfair because they are more harmful to North Koreans than they are beneficial because more people sent, are sent to prisoner camps as a result of crackdowns more than they are actually defects. So we see that because of the three generation policy that it's not actually effective. And then one major issue that we want to bring out is the issue of diplomacy. We told you that denuclearization and disarmament talks are not possible on a resident to resident basis. Just because I tell a North Korean resident that this armament is important, it's not going to happen. What they do is limit the chances for this diplomacy to happen. In order for them to be for there to be unification, is which is what they want, there needs to be disarmament and denuclearization. This is not possible without nation to nation talk, which they limit because we are the ones that uh, protect security. We think that the pro side should win today's debate. Thank you. The opposition team clearly won today's debate. First of all, they mentioned about practical harms done, uh, practical harms that, that we're gambling the national security. However, we have given facts that this the national security is not hard because, because as we have mentioned from DWA article on October 15, 2014, there was no practical harm done by um, the North Koreans um, shooting fires at um, South Korean borders. And also, they have mentioned about Yongpyeon, um, Yongpyeon accident. And this is that, that they have mentioned that this wasn't a big event that North Koreans um, um, provoked South Korea. However, Yongpin action was not caused by the propaganda activities that have been done by South Korea. So proving that this is irre irrelevant in talking about um, today's motion. And they're clearly, clearly continuously in assuming that North Korea will attack if we take um, propaganda, if we send, keep on sending propaganda balloons to North Korea. However, this is not true because they're assuming, they're giving a hypothetical situation where North Korea um, will um, send, uh, will, uh, will um, declare a war to South Korea because North Korea as I have shown before, North Korea doesn't have the capability to do so. And second of all, they, they mentioned about me, us giving our primary, primary evidence only. However, I would like to give an official evidence from um, the South Korean government. The South Korean government said on um, January, 5, January 5th, 2015, that they will not um, limit the rights of um, South Korean citizens because that this is not done by the uh, government of South Korea. However, if this is done by the citizens, and they have the right to do so according to the customal, uh, customary law from the United States. And also, they contradict themselves by saying that propaganda balloons is not the only reason why the South Korean, uh, why the North Korean government is threatened right now. Uh, they have proved, they have said, they have stated that if the propaganda balloons is not the re main reason why the um, North Korean government is provoked, then why are we debating? Uh, why are we debating that, no, that we have to limit the rights of the South Koreans? Because if propaganda balloons is not the main reason, we have no right to do so. And the, and if limiting um, the only cause uh, the one of the causes of the uh, North Korean provo provocation. That then how are we to, how can we assure that the North Korean government um, um, will stop sending um, will stop sending threat threatening? 